It's okay. <laughs> that was okay. We've, we've just it's been a long week. So many Year, tangents. Life. I feel like if we've ever followed one rabbit down a hole, we could spend a lot of time talking about any seven topic. hours a day here. I reckon we'll get something done. <laughs> All right, so today we have a wonderful guest. He's a, he's a gentleman to the end. He holds doors open for people. He's a wonderful human being. Um, he's had a go and we love commercial people who take commercial oh, yeah. risk and we back them all the way. Uh, I'd like to welcome Jonathan Hill. How are you, mate? Good. Thanks very much. Thanks for having me, guys. Thanks Thank for you. coming in. Thanks for coming in. Now, the main reason we wanted to get you in today was because we uh, we love a couple of the businesses that you had a go at before. Yeah. Um, we are thinking right now, again, sort of refer back to the circumstances, there's going to be a lot of people thinking about starting their own idea or business or product or yeah. side hustle or whatever yeah, yeah. and you've done it you've yeah. done it and we admire that um give us a little bit of background <laughs> for context of a couple of the things you've had a go at so the first business i was working in recruitment Imagine um, that. And, yeah, and i was actually at an australia day party one of my friends came back from america and he had a pair of wooden sunglasses on and I was like, shit, I've never seen anything like yep, him. Yep. So I was like, and everyone else at the party was like, wow, we really like those. So I thought there might be an opportunity to bring them to Australia. So I went to the computer, Googled around, no one had all the domain names. So I registered a few domain names. And then the next day, rode off to the manufacturer to see if I could bring them in. It was a hard no then. Yep. Um, but then I actually, while I was Googling around, found some wooden watches called WeWood. Yep. Um, and those ones, like, and I ordered a couple from America, and they arrived and I was wearing one, and everyone just kept me asking, where did you get the watch from? Yeah, wow. So, and I was like, this could be quite a good opportunity to set up a business. Yep. So registered the domain names, yep. um, spoke to the US di like distributor, and ordered, I think it was about 100, so maybe about 50 watches. Yep. And obviously you were getting the, the US dollar and the Australian dollar were parity then, so it wasn't like now that it would cost you more. Yep. Um, got them over and set up a website called Branched. We were like, what can we set up that would and branching into new things? Yeah, so yeah, called I like Branched. It. Um, then we, we got the watches and we, we didn't really know anything about Google Ads or anything like that. Because so a long time ago, it would have been a lot It was, it, would yeah, about, yeah. it was about nine years ago now. Yeah, wow. But we went to a company called Shopify that do websites that we can make up. You can make a website, anyone can make a website that's selling online through PayPal, you set up a merchant account in the space for about a day, right? And we didn't have a clue about it, just put some images on there, <laughs> it all linked up. And then we are like, shit, how do we sell these watches? Yep. <laughs> so we sell a few to a few friends and like um, well, Once that's tapped out, it's like, what now? Well, exactly. so, so we tried Google Ads and, and that was back in the day and they were costing us a lot of money for not much return. Yep. So we wrote to all the magazines. So we wrote to all the magazines saying, we've just got these new watches and things like that. And then we got a hit on Men's Style, and uh, Men's Style printed a watch, and then we started selling a few watches. And then Is that back a few when more. there were magazines? Yeah, the magazine, exactly <laughs> right. It was a proper physical one. <laughs> so I did that, started selling a few more watches, and then we hired a PR agency um, to go out there to um, get it in the media for yeah. us. And then it just grew from there, really. This is where it's interesting to me because I would think of digital marketing, certainly now, I would mm -hmm. think of digital marketing, I would think Google AdWords, I would think setting up a shop of our, but to get a PR agency would not occur to me on the first sweep. Well, and there was good profit margin in the watches and, and eventually um, they were made in Italy. Um, the guys came to us and said, look, you're doing quite a good job. Do you want to be the distributor? So if you're the distributor, we could sell to the shops. So we um, then it halved our buy price. So we were buying them for a quarter of what we'd sell them online for. Yep, and yep. if we sold them to stores, we'd still make a 100% margin. So we just hit the phones and we got into about 228 stores. Wow. Um, plus that, getting them to stores, they obviously, it's good for cash flow, but also people see them and they yes. go online and drive more to the website. Yeah. And you make a lot more money on the website than you do selling to Without the stores. Without the bites along the way. Yeah, and also you don't have to worry about payment terms or anything like that. Yeah. You sell a watch, the money's in your account, you send it out. Just in terms of the watches, the wooden watches as a product, I find it fascinating. I remember, and I'll put the name of the um, futurist up on our website later, but because I can't, can't remember, remember the name it, right. but he, he's got a book, it's like um, Digital Mind, Analog Hearts, and I remember oh. hearing, or something like that, I remember hearing him asking the room about who in here has a phone, and we mm. all have mobile phones, yeah. we all have the time yeah. on our phone. There's, yeah. 
no need for a watch no. in this day and age. And yet, I love, I like, I love and, it. And, and yet, that, right, yeah. so, and, and it's this, this sort of, there's all different reasons why people wear watches for the fashion, the, mm -hmm. it's different, um, or someone might have a watch that's been handed down to them. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. that's yeah. sort of a wooden watch is really mm. tapping into that analog, yeah, it is. old school. And they're so light, compared to metal watches, they're like incredibly light, and that's what you notice. So why aren't you wearing one now? Well, I sold the business. <laughs> And upgrade. And if they want you, if they want you back, then you yeah. wear wooden watches yeah, again. Well, Good on you, mate. That was probably the best advertising form was just wearing the product. So yep. I think if you um, um, like, if you make bring in a product or set a product, you've got to um, lead by example. And it's like my food business that I set up next. Yeah. Um, I always ate that. Um, so yeah. tell us about that. So. My, when I moved to Australia, my dad unfortunately passed away before I moved over here and he ate really bad food and he was very busy. He, was a, he had a, a business owner himself and I was like, well, pretty why? Pretty serious can't? business too, John. Yeah, it was quite a kind of big business. Yes, pretty serious yeah. business. So, um, and he, he was very busy. He worked probably seven in the morning till eight at night every day. And he just, lunches, he just had to run and get a sandwich. Yep. Um, and I saw he just ate quite badly so yeah. i was like why can't busy people eat good food so teamed up with my business partner who was a leader in food at the time yep. and created a company called chef good yes um and then chef good grew um and yeah through partnerships and and sort of advertising we grew to probably the fifth biggest um delivery food business in australia um, at a time when it was hot like yes it, it was it, 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 Probably when you started. Light and Easy was the only real big one. When you started, but yeah, by, by foods, yeah. within three or four years after when you've taken off, there would have been 40 yeah, competitors yeah, trying to get market segments. Now, yeah. you mentioned a word there that I'm going to capture out of the air, and that mm -hmm. is partnerships, because yeah. that is what's fascinating to me. And that's sort of the reason that, yeah, we. we this survived. was a leap for you, wasn't it? Yes. So it was, yeah. when you went about, and, and let's apply it to future as well, when you go about and when you went about forming partnerships, what yeah. was it that you looked for? Um, I was calling sort of mutually beneficial partnerships. So you've got to, you can't go to someone wanting something and they get nothing out of it. It's got to work for both parties. So we saw that F45, obviously biggest fitness franchise in Australia. They've done okay. They've done all right. <laughs> They've done all right. Um, we saw them and, and what they were offering was uh, um, like an eight week challenge. And you go on the app and you can uh, sort of um, order your meals. Um, well, you can't, or we, back then you, they'd have all the recipes on there, yep. but, but we thought, well, why can't we make the meals for you? So busy doing F45, 45 yeah, yeah. minutes, we thought it's quite a good market. So I approached a load of the franchisees um, and they were like, yes, done. So we, and we gave, gave something back to them yep. um, if people signed up. And then it started going like wildfire. Uh, it really grew our business quite yeah. considerably. And then head office came to us and said, would you like to do it um, um, like on an ongoing basis, basis working with the whole, bit more organized, the whole network, yeah. 460 um, studios and yeah, a bit more organized. Yeah. Um, plus they, they've got a very strong brand and they want to keep it that way. Yeah. So we worked with them in partnership to create quite a cool, like a, an offering. I remember, it was um, very good. It was, yeah. a, it was a good little campaign. And we went from um, doing maybe, maybe 500 customers to 3,000 customers wow. overnight. So, so, I, I so love, six times. I, I love yeah, as you're explaining all of this, how it's sort of just, you know, your, the way you describe it just makes it sound like, you know, all these things just fell into place. Mm. And of course there's luck in life, but you heard us just- Make your own luck. <laughs> yeah. That's right. You heard us talking about these, this first hundred days sort of concept mm. and get, get all your ducks in a row. Uh, yeah. like. Have you had that experience or was the first one more relaxed than the second? Or? Yeah, well, the first one, obviously, it's, we started it with me and my business partner. Um, we shook hands on the Australia Day party and uh, we'd had a few drinks, 50-50. We're like, yeah, all right. <laughs> we chucked in like two and a half grand each, yeah. I think. And then we got off the ground very quickly. And yeah. like, we, we obviously registered the company, went online, just went like, yeah, register company, registered that. <laughs> Good on you. And then got the websites, yeah. did the thing. We, we launched, the one thing I did do was um, get the trademarks. Yes. Um, that's quite important. Yeah, and that yeah. takes about six months to do. Um, it, like to you, they've got to advertise it to the world. Everyone gets a chance to, to challenge. Yep. 
So that took a while, but we got them in the end. And that's obviously your IP, so that, yep. that makes it more valuable. Yeah. Um, Did you wait to register the trademarks for a little while to see that it was this was going to work? Uh, sort of, but the thing is I saw how well they were doing overseas, so I wanted yeah. the trademark in Australia. So we did that. Um, and yeah, the first 100 days was just hustle, trying to get, speak to as many people as you yeah. can. Whereas Chef Good was a lot more, because we knew it was going to be a bigger business, and yeah. there was a lot more turning, like making the meals, getting out to the customers. There was a lot more moving parts to look at. Yeah. So the first, it probably took us a year of planning to get our first meals out. Wow. Um, so, and in that time, I, I sold um, Branch. Yeah. So we went to a broker. Both of us sort of um, thought it was time to move on. Yep. Um, and yeah, we, we sold out. And actually, going back, I wish we, uh, we'd spent a bit more time when we first set up to, to register it through a trust because you save 50% capital gains tax. So that, that's one key thing. Those I would little definitely, things, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just little things. And, and I didn't have any financial advice when we started it, whereas now You're I've young got too. a. Yeah, uh, exactly. You're young was, yeah. And you, like, it's a cheap lesson long yeah. term because yeah. you do it the right from here on in. Mm. But you'd hate to think that your big idea that's the big monster is the one that you don't set up right. Well, that's the well, thing. Exactly Sometimes right. when you're yeah. starting these things, you're like, well, we'll flog, we'll flog 50 yeah. of them and yeah. we'll just turn a little profit. So exactly right. it might seem like a lot to actually invest in all yeah. this other stuff. It's, it's kind of eats away at any How profit. How long is a piece of string on these things? Hindsight, hey? Well, that's the thing, but we didn't have that sort of money to um, get the legals in and yeah. the lawyer. Because if you know, yeah, we, I know more now, but it, you've got to find a good law firm. Don't go one of the massive ones. Just find, find someone local. Someone that suits you. Suits you yeah. all, Depending uh, if you're setting yeah. up, if, you, yep. if you've got a, a, like a lot of investment coming in, then you want to have that ironclad. Investment, should we talk about that? That's a good one because um, a lot of people talk about capital raises and yeah. bringing in, and Laura, we did a podcast on that long ago when we were talking about having uh, investment in your business and yeah. shareholders and yeah. how it can be a bit, there can be some downside risk. Mm -hmm. um, you've gone through the capital raising experience. How yeah. long did it take from start to oh, It took, probably to took cash. a year or two, a year to two years. Mm -hmm. um, I th we thought, oh, this will be easy, but <laughs> it's a lot harder than you think. And there was a lot of people that sort of got a bit further down the line and then fell through. One thing that we did do um, that really saved the business is American Express offer a, a very good charge card. Yep. And the charge card you can actually pay invoices on as well. Like they charge you maybe one, one and a half percent, two percent. Um, but they give you a really, a really good line of credit. Yep. Um, so we used that. Plus, also we took one of those um, sort of short-term loans that was quite expensive, but we needed the cash, yep. and we were just trying to survive and, and grow. And then in the in the end, um, I had a partner come on came on board um, who actually facilitated our capital raise. Yeah. Like he put. So you together, brought in some expertise. Yes. To, to yeah. And, and rather than paying him, he took sweat equity. Yep. Uh, he worked for a, um, a fund at the time yep. and he used his expertise to do the sort of the model and the pitch deck and things like that that take a lot of time. Yep. Um, and there's always a moving target, you've always got to update them, but it's good to have a framework, but he helped us with that. And then it would have been um, just over a year ago, um, we were invested in by a um, family office. Yep. And um, yeah, and then that's the, that, that sort of secured the funding and. Um, yeah, but it is, it's not, it's not a quick turnaround process. No, it's not, no. And also you've got to be, one thing, money is money, but you want to try and find someone that's a strategic investor. Yes. So it depends. If you just want the money, there's like different Thank people you. out there. Whereas if you can align someone that's got the expertise in that industry that can benefit the industry plus bring yeah. some money in, I'd Even highly better. suggest that. Mate, yeah. fantastic advice to finish on because once again, we've only got halfway in and we've run out of time. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> thank you, Jonathan Hill, for coming in today. Uh, you've been no wonderful. Worries, thanks, this guys. is, I think that we might do this again. Uh, yeah. We'll get in a bit more detail on some other things. Yeah. Perhaps he might have had enough of us already. Yeah. Oh, I wouldn't bite him. <laughs> yeah. um, thank you very much, Laura. Is there anything? Thank you, Christian. We, we, you know, we just no, go no, back to hang lockdown. Hang in there, Melbourne. Hang, hang in, there. in there. Have a wine um, this weekend. Have a break and go for a walk and we'll come back fighting on Monday. Have a, have a Claymore wine. Yeah, uh, that'd be a very <laughs> good choice. Uh, thank you very much. All the best, and we'll probably see you in another week.